All right, welcome back to the Flag of Socks Podcast, episode 31. Today on the show, Roe v. Wade's about to be overturned, and the demon people are big mad about that. We hit the streets of New Orleans to try to find someone who actually likes Joe Biden. We're going to show you the worst of the worst in this year's Met Gala costume review. Dave Chappelle got attacked on stage, and there's tampons in the boys' room. All this and more is Flag of Socks Podcast, episode 31, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Those words are just words until action actually starts. And I should speak loud than words, but at the same time, words speak loud and action because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. This stops the podcast featuring Richard Grant. I don't know how you do that in one take. Absolute time. ripper. One for one. Every single time, there are no other takes. I just do it once every time. It's just one and done every time. Crazy. Richard Rapoy and I just got back for our New Orleans trip. We had a fantastic time there. Uh, we shot some street content, which you'll see later in the episode. Uh, and also, we learned a few things. I learned some things about New Orleans that I really liked. What did you learn? Uh, there were three things that I took away from the trip. Okay. Uh, number one, you never eat a boiled crawfish if it's straight-tailed. Because that means it was dead before they boiled it. Good tip. Good tip. Number two, New Orleans is not a huge sauce town. So a lot of the food they give you, the po' boys and the sandwiches, they kind of just put ketchup and mayo and lettuce and tomato. They're not really going above and beyond with the sauces. So it's kind of on you to to do that. No aiolis, no sort of like hybrid sauces. Yeah. It just seems like they're really focused on what's in between the bread, like the, the meats and the fried shrimp and the fish or whatever. The oysters, they're not really focused on sauces. Okay. What's number three? And that's tough for you. I know you are. I'm a, a huge sauce, sauce guy. guy. So that was not easy. Uh, and that's then. That's where they get you too. The sauces is where, is where they get you. Yeah. So calorie wise. Calorie wise, I'm not really paying attention to that. I was a little <laughs> disappointed. I thought it'd be more of a saucier town. Uh, and then the final thing I realized from the trip, which I liked, was when you buy stuff and you go into a restaurant or a bar and you give your credit card, they swipe it and you kind of open a tab mm -hmm. and then you can just leave whenever you want. They're the, prepared for drunkards. They're like, that's yeah. the whole city is a defense against drunk people. Yeah. So basically, it's just like you can drink on the road. Uh, you can take drinks with you and you can just order a bunch of stuff and just walk out. Interesting. Which is my which is my dream. I know. I like I love Irish this. goodbye your tab. Yeah. I love being able just to walk out whenever. You ready for the two things I learned? Yeah. I learned there's video poker in every single bar, mm -hmm. which is crazy. They just have gambling. They just want you to gamble. Um, and then number two, the oysters in New Orleans meaty are gigantic. They're thick. It's crazy. I'm eating little St. Pete oysters. It's like barely anything putting it on a cracker. This uh, this New Orleans stuff is a, a burger patty. It's basically yeah. a slider. It's almost too much. Yeah. I, I, I was th chewing for a while. Yeah. Because you can swallow the booger when it's like a small oyster, when it's a big meaty thing like that. You're in a whole different world that you might not be prepared for. Yeah. The video poker was great. We were playing me, uh, Richard Ratboy, and Typical Liberal. And the Typical Liberal's wife came over. And I was like, we have to leave. Like, come on, guys. Don't. He was up. <laughs> he was up like from 100 to like 550. And she's like, come on. We got to get out of here. Like, don't, you don't hit video poker. Don't play video poker all day. And we just started singing, we're, we're not, not going, going anywhere, 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 and just slapping it down. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. We also have a street video, which we'll be uh, playing for you later in the show. There's a great street video we shot. We're trying to find people that like Joe Biden. Mm. Don't you think you're kind of like clickbaiting everyone with a street video? A little bit. Uh, I, the, the, the thumbnail is a street video thumbnail. Um, and there is going to be a street video in here. And it was released Friday at 11 a.m. So I don't think it's full clickbait. It is maybe attracting a bigger crowd to the podcast this week, which Hopefully. is the goal. Yep. Um, but I don't think it's foul play or anything inappropriate. No, I get it. I think that if we have a little street aspect for micro issues or little things we want to do, Fleckus, you know, people want to see Fleckus back out on the streets. And, uh, you know, the crazy crowd hasn't been that uh, active recently. They're kind of in power. They're like, you know, floating on their own fumes. You know, as opposed to when Trump and the resist movement was happening. So, yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens. The abortion thing. And it's funny. We left New Orleans, right? Like we got home and then the abortion, the Roe vs. Wade thing was announced. Yeah. So we just missed that. So we kind of missed an opportunity there. Yeah, that's OK. We are going to maybe introduce more street stuff into the videos. Imagine combining the best of both worlds, the podcast plus the street videos into one that would equal, in my mind, the best show on TV. Best new podcast of all time. Next, the bounties. Remember the bounties we talked about last week? 
we have a, the probably the best bounty we could have gotten, guys. A best man at a wedding gave a speech, and the first thing he said was a Fleckus Talks the Podcast plug. Absolutely nuts. Check this out. He almost lost the audience, guys. <laughs> <laughs> he almost lost the audience. Most people didn't even know what he was talking about properly, but that is how it's done. Yeah. That was bold. That's grade A stuff, and he will be rewarded. Bounty. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to see the, the other one, the guy with the plane, runner-up of the week? Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this guy would have won any other week. Uh, oh, yeah. With the wedding guy. So. Here he is. Best way to watch Fleckus? While driving a plane. <laughs> I think it's called flying. But While flying a plane. That's pretty good. There's Fleckus viewers everywhere. If you have a unique way of viewing or some people you want to share the show with, obviously send it in and you will be rewarded uh, via the bounty system as well. Yep. Those are this week's winners. Good luck beating that. I don't think anyone ever could or would. Unless what? Maybe like a funeral. You catch a baby like that you deliver on the side of a highway and go, Fleckus talks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something insane. <laughs> life, new life or recent death. Yeah. So at a funeral, if you were to mention it, it would be kind of dark, but that would be the only thing that's like higher stakes than best man speech at a wedding. Yeah. And that's suicide. That's crazy. So please yes. don't. Please don't. We're not please, recommending. Please don't. We're moving on. This is still housekeeping. This is an abbreviated housekeeping this week. So we have a huge episode to get to. Um, the last two weeks, we realized that we skipped the video of the dog playing fetch with the statue guy. Yep. That's going to be an uplifting goal this week. Sorry about that. We're going to get that squared away. You'll see the video this week. And then the final section, which I'm not up to date on. You told me about this. It says uh, doppelganger section. Richard Rapoy has a doppelganger, I guess. No, you have a doppelganger. Okay, um, let's go. So here he is. Mm. On the pellet no, I did 400. Oh, 400. I crank it up. Even for 400 wings? about an hour. Yeah, I always cook wings at 400. All right. I've been cooking them at 350. <laughs> All right. So I, I, I have a statement to make. It feels like there are way more Fleckus types in the world than there are like me types or any other type. Like you have a wide range. Anybody who's generally big with a beard can fall into you. DJ Khaled, this barbecue guy. Uh, we had some little kids call you DJ Khaled once the other day. Yeah. Um, and then I said, another one. They go, are you DJ Khaled? And I said, yeah, I am. Another one. And the, the kid was like, we know you're not. And I was like, all right. <laughs> like, like, all right, we get it. <laughs> I don't even know what you wanted then. Um, yeah. And so I think there people send me like Fleck is spotted all the time. So I think we're going to add a little doppelganger section, just keep you balanced and probably find the best one. Yeah, that's fine. Basically, for large people with the dark beards, you kind of have to shave your head because mm. it's too much hair. Otherwise, if you have like a beard and then a lot of hair and, then you know, I used to wear sunglasses. All you have is like this area of face left. Yeah. So people shave their head and it kind of narrows and longs your face out. So that's why everyone kind of looks like me, because when you're a bigger guy, you have limited things to work with. OK, so you shave your head, keep a beard and it's like almost passable as a normal person. Um, almost. Yeah. All right. Send them in. Keep sending us doppelgangers because we want to see. And there if is no one of me. People in the comments are always like, "Yo, Richard Rapoy, you're like this World of Warcraft guy on a YouTube channel." Yeah, good for you. I don't like that stuff. Um, there is also this workout guy. Uh, I think his name's Grizzly. He's like this gigantic person from somewhere in like Eastern Europe. Yeah, his his Instagram is Kappa Kulik, and he's he goes by Grizzly, and he's a Fleckus type. And he's not like fully me because he's like a true, I think he's 420 pounds yeah, and just he, an absolute muscle strength meat guy. So it's like if you gr if you grabbed me in the top right corner and dragged and like yeah. stretched me out <laughs> Control like shift 1.4, um, it would kind of look like that. Uh, he, This guy and his buddies are doing these workouts that I want nothing to do with. Let's just roll some. One of them is a a single leg leg press using an Olympic bar, which is just like bar <laughs> barbell, single leg, leg press. <laughs> you even get that on top of yourself. And then what? And then you bring it down. Other guys doing like squats that start with the bar on the ground and you bring it up your back in like the most uncomfortable looking thing ever picking up like a thousand pounds. These guys, these guys are on some, these my, guys are on some stuff. My problem is it's like, these guys are both like kind of strong men or whatever. And imagine watching this and being like, okay, I'm going to incorporate that into my routine and just getting a rotator cuff blown out. Or, Immediately. Yeah. So. There's one guy who does like overhead presses with like a ton of weight 
and then just drops the bar and catches it in his elbows. Yeah. For what? I don't know. I, it probably makes you tough. The pain. Yeah. The thing like is tough. Thing. Yeah. Like Grizzly, that guy, He some of his training is he just like puts his arms in front of his chest and lets his buddies kick him like full body kicks. And he's <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. Maybe that's like a workout. Maybe that does something. I'm sure it makes you tough. And it, it works. He's tougher than me and he's stronger than me. There you go. So what can I complain about? Uh, moving on, let's get into Cringe of the Week. This Cringe of the Week is a special one because we have our Met Gala costume review. Yep, we which did this last year. We did this last year. It was very popular. Uh, everyone loved it. And this year, we couldn't really ignore it. There were a lot of must-see costumes. Yeah, it's becoming the men wear dress costume party of the year. Um, Show off your good boys. Yeah, yeah. Whoever the most obedient good boy is shows up in his dress and he goes, reporting for duty, ready to spread whatever message you want. Yep. Let's go to our first person, uh, Lizzo. America's favorite. America's favorite. Uh, Lizzo's looking kind of like Hagrid from Harry Potter in this. Yeah. I know that's kind of a mean statement, but I'm allowed to say because I look like Hagrid too. Yep. So as long as that's the case. I mean, it's undeniable, right? Like Lizzo is gigantic. She yeah. She embraces it. So it's part of her identity. So yes, she looks like Hagrid. And it's an outfit that Hagrid kind of wore too. So mm -hmm. if you put him like at least the silhouettes a match. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Who's that Pokemon scenario? <laughs> nobody's getting, nobody's <laughs> not guessing Hagrid. <laughs> oh, no, it wasn't Hagrid. It was Lizzo. Yeah. Um, dude, and so how many cubic feet of fabric is on this thing? This is pretty buff. I mean, I don't know. It yeah. Looks expensive to me. Like, you know how it's like sometimes you go to double XL and it costs a little more? It's one of those situations for sure. It's about the size of the green screen we have on the wall here. And it covers the whole wall. Yes. Uh, next is, I don't know who this guy is, but this is the, the backwards section. Remember last year we had the backwards? Yeah. Everyone who got things backwards, men dressing like women's yeah, backwards. Man look like a lady. <laughs> That's backwards. Uh, so this week's backwards is this guy. It looks somewhat normal, but then you look closely, he's got the acrylic nails on. You zoom in and all of a sudden he's compromised. Which is what we talked about. Guys, a little I'm more. clean this week. I'm clean this week as well. A little more subtle. Um, and then we have another guy in a dress still in the backward section. Yeah, this guy is Oscar Isaac. And this is more of like a, this is basically a hostage video. Yeah. So this guy is like, an, uh, he's in Star Wars. So he's taking the Disney cut. He's taking the Disney checks. So he's on the, he's on the hook now. Yeah, that doesn't come for free. <laughs> yeah. You don't get the Star Wars role. You're not the man on the poster unless you're human. Like, oh, you're in Star Wars. It's like, okay, cool. Like, that sounds great. And then it's like, oh yeah, for the Met Gala. Like, you got to throw some acrylic nails on and wear a dress. <laughs> Put the fucking dress on. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I got the, the Star Wars thing, yeah. All right, so let's let his well, hostage. Let's let him go. Hey, I'm Oscar Isaac. Uh, no, I'm wearing this Tom Brown dress. I feel very comfortable. Uh, as you should. As I should. I feel very happy to be here. I feel very comfortable. Everything's fine. He's this blinking Morse code. Like, someone in the back has a gun in his back. I'm very comfortable. This is fine. I'm wearing a dress. And the woman says, as you should, as you should. As if, no, no, ladies, we don't need you to tell us what men should be doing. Yeah. And it's like, dude, oh, you're so brave. What? The 50th guy wearing a dress at the Met Gala? There's no cachet. There's no like oomph anymore. Yeah. Wear stilts. Show up on stilts. Wear a MAGA hat. Oh yeah, that's brave. That's that would be crazy. There's no brave here. The majority, I'd say, most of the men are wearing some sort of subverted outfit: yeah. women outfit, nails, makeup, something LGBT-ish. Do something else. I mean, it's so derivative. It, we've seen it like a hundred times. Oh, the guy's wearing a dress. Oh my god, he's such a fashion icon. Like, get get out of here. Yeah. So this next person, uh, this was the comfiest outfit of the day. This lady's wearing this big puffy red dress. Looks like kind of like a winter North Face coat or something. Yeah, this I is would one, like this, that. This one I'm okay with. It's unique. It's interesting. You know, you're causing a scene. And right? then you sit in your chair and it goes. Pff. Yeah, it, all the goose down. Just kind of just like you're just as comfy as you can be. Yeah, that that's the most comfortable outfit you can wear. But um, obviously, where there's comfortable, there's less comfortable, and the least comfortable outfit is this metal chandelier spike thing. Yeah, Peacock Man. Uh, is that Jared Leto? It looks like him. I thought it was at first, but it's somebody else. And I don't I don't know his name anymore. I forgot, but I confirmed it was not Jared. Okay. Because if it was Jared, it would make sense because there's a good chance he's the Antichrist. Yeah, he's got a cult. Yeah, right? <laughs> he does. Doesn't he? he does. 
So, yeah, this person's the least comfortable wearing all these metal spines and stuff. I don't know how you would, when you sit in the chair on that one, it goes like, <laughs> and then starts like going into your side and poking you, I bet. Very not comfortable. Yeah, can't eat any finger foods with this one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's a couple here that were uh, kind of wedding themed. This is like a woman in a wedding dress with a backwards hat. And then this guy's wearing a tux, but then he has jeans. Yeah. I don't know what to think about these. You just can't be normal. So yeah. I'm going to wear a wedding dress. It's like, okay. And then the backwards hat. All <laughs> and right. Make it look like a t-shirt on top. Yeah. Creative. Whatever. Uh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get mad at these people for doing the weird freaky dress. Isn't this a weird freaky dress time? Yeah. So whatever. That one's a pass. That's fine with us. Um, moving on. There's a Twinkie guy. Yes. So this guy looks like a Twinkie. Twinkie guy with puffy collar, Jerry Seinfeld shirt. Puffy collar, Jerry Seinfeld shirt, tan outfit. Looks like a Twinkie, not twink. I didn't say twink. That would be not right and not nice. He's a Twinkie, which is the food. He's not twink. Well, he probably is, but he probably is a twink. Too, but, but I'm not calling him a twink. We are not. He does have painted nails, though, so which is a leading indicator of compromised. Compromised leading indicator is always the acrylic nails. Uh, Hillary Clinton, the last one, major get out vibes here. Yep. And with the help, helping her dress, masked. Yeah. So overall dark scene. Hillary's back from the dead, I guess. Uh, it's been like 20 years since her last Met Gala. Uma was there, too. Oh, so good. she had her little uh, apprentice. No Anthony Weiner, though. And I, I don't know if Bill was there. Mm, probably not. She, Hillary looks great. Glad to see her still uh, still alive and kicking. Yeah, I uh, guess. Last look, we had Russell uh, Westbrook in a little skirt thing with his little top hat. So I think, um, you know, anybody can get a twink to wear a dress. But when you get a nice masculine guy who's in the NBA, like an MVP season type guy, and you get him to wear a dress, that's a big get. That's a big get. That's like a real show of power. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's like a year. We got you. Um, keep being a good boy. Don't do anything crazy. Yeah. So that takes us out of our Met Gala costume review. There are some good ones as always. Uh, and it takes us into the meat of cringe of the week. Uh, Dave Chappelle got attacked on stage the other day. Yeah. Uh, a couple days ago. And his, uh, the offender's arm got, the guy got stomped out into like a snow crab position. <laughs> so he's kind of just, yeah, absolutely stomped out. Um, so and, do you think that's this is, was emboldened by the Will Smith uh, smack? You yeah, think there's a this is the first step on the ladder. Yeah, I think it's a hundred percent the first step on the ladder. People are getting mad, and they've like already welcomed the 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 mad beta male demon season yeah. where like all these demonic people who are compromised are now getting mad and emboldened and like getting physical because of words yeah they can't beat you one-on-one -on -one, but they can with a crowd so they're they're doing a lot of that that this is like the season of people getting violent over their own th the things that they think they're oppressed by yeah. so people making fun of them people making jokes uh, so, get uh, you know, I'm expecting to see a lot more of that, unfortunately. So the one thing I think is there's a real opportunity for these stage runners if they have a first leading stage runner go. Because mm -hmm. you can see, uh, we'll play the video, but all the security swarms this guy and they start chasing him. And then Dave Chappelle's just kind of up there and all his security's taken now. You need a second guy. You need a wave two. Yeah. A wave two. That's <laughs> when you really get him. So Dave Chappelle's security stomped him out. The guy looks like very beat up his arm was just backwards yeah speaking this, of backers his arm was backers going into the ambulance M moving on to yep, the next sure. piece of cringe we're still in cringe we have two clips of uh mad girlfriends going kind of crazy the first is a girl who finds her boyfriend out in a date with her best friend yep and this is her reaction i think both of these girls are latina Th this is also part of demon season as well of course <laughs> this girl finds her with a best friend yes crazy face screams causes a scene what's that gonna get you and those types of screams that's like someone come help me if you hear these screams you have to kind of come over and like figure out what's going on yeah emts are running to the scene like yeah. something crazy happened. something bad happened that's like you came in and there's a dead body in the room type of thing <laughs> yeah that's not like i caught him out to dinner with my girl um but and so here's another one this one's a little more extreme we don't know the backstory on this or if it was cheating but it's a little argument going on on the side of the highway. 
girl kind of smacks him and then boom, decides to throw herself at a car. Now you have all the same problems you used to have. Plus you got hit by a car. <laughs> yeah. Now you're hit by a car and your boyfriend still is cheating on you and not your boyfriend. And now you have a broken leg and maybe that'll bring him back. Maybe she'll, he'll realize how much he likes her when he sees her hurt like that. Mm -hmm. And maybe it could save the relationship. Yeah, that's probably, hey, it worked. If uh, it worked, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. But um, yeah, this is like the demonic, impulsive, like trigger finger happy people who are just uh, all emotions, emotional driven decision making. And uh, it, what does it end up with? You humiliated on the internet and hit by a car. Yeah. The respect is gone because the boyfriends in both situations, it seems like cheated on the girlfriends. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're not, the respect is gone. It always has been gone. And now you're trying to get it back in like a last ditch effort that results in your public humiliation and injury, which isn't really going to work, ladies. I would just break up. It's over. Compulsively work out as a means of control. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> control what you can. And then you posted TikTok like nine months later of yourself, like he didn't want me and you're fat. And then now you're shredded and you do that Western Christian yep, music. Exactly. So that's like the best way out of this. Uh, if, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I don't think they took our advice, obviously, because everything already happened and it got <laughs> ugly. Too late. Um, bottle it up, use that as workout fuel and come back better. Never admit defeat, bottle it up, resent these people forever, never trust again. Get an ulcer. Every time you date someone, assume that they're going to do the same thing that that last boyfriend did. Never fully open up, never let your guard down. Let it affect every facet and relationship of your life. Destroy every man that comes across your path. Never date again, start dating a girl. Yep. That's, I don't know, maybe it will be the best way to go about it. Um, now we're heading into the school part, like the education, the watch out for the kids part of Cringe of the Week. Yep. This section within Cringe of the Week is called, How's This Gonna Go? Okay. The first one is, there's now boy, there's now tampons in the boys' room. Yep. Uh, the governor of Oregon passed the Menstrual Dignity Act, which requires all schools, elementary, middle, and high school, starting next year to place period products in all bathrooms, boys and girls, with instructions on how to use it. As a former child, yeah, I can tell you that those products in the boys' room will be used as jokes, will be used in tricks, will be messed with. Toilet cloggers. Toilet cloggers, put up your nose, uh, just absolute prank situations only. There are, I, I think it's going to be used pretty much as a prank or as a joke 100% of the time. Yep. I don't think there's any trans boys that are going to be using period products in elementary school. Elementary school is like the first thing I think of when I think of an elementary school is like the tiny toilet that's like down here on the ground. <laughs> and then you're like, yeah, throw some fucking tampons in there, too. <laughs> it's like a joke. Billy Madison, like squatting at the urinal. Yeah. And it's like, let's get these kids some tampons. The elementary school. Yeah. So maybe that's just a one example and the kids are actually fine in school and things aren't going bad. Uh, let's go to the next one. That's uh Hard to crack the egg. Okay. And then it says parentheses jail. Yeah, that's, that's a you <laughs> thing. Um, so this is from uh, like a Reddit aggregator and it says it's from the subreddit uh, trans teachers discuss how to crack an egg, which in this context literally means grooming a child. And so I just want to read a couple things because this kind of is them saying things that we've said for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so here's one of the comments. The first egg is always the hardest to crack. I would not recommend telling any other adults about this. They could potentially go to your students' parents and out them. Instead, you should give them links to subreddits, Discord servers, etc. that can help them explore their gender identity privately. So that's two memes right there. Number one, let us have secret conversations with your kids about sex. Number one. Number two is... Uh, let the internet radicalize your kids. The teachers will run interference and then your parents will just be like, what happened? Left out of the loop. Imagine that all these things happen and the parents are never involved or told. Yeah. And then by the time they do tell the parents, it's pretty much too late because you already have a trans kid on your hands. <laughs> it's not like a kid who's like, yeah, dad, I think I'm kind of a girl. And some of the teachers at school are telling me about it. Then you could be like, no, no, don't listen to these people. They have purple hair. Stay away from the bright colors. By the time your kid admits it to you, the parents that you're like afraid of, good luck. It's over. Yeah. So it, 
they love this access to your kids and they love keeping secrets. One of, in one of the comments, somebody says, it's nearly summer. Have you thought about arranging a summer trip with just you two to help explore yourselves? And then somebody commented saying, can't tell if serious, because literally like you're suggesting like what, a one-on-one -on -one summer trip with your trans teacher that nobody signs off on? Yeah, that sounds, that's the jail part. Um, that sounds like illegal. And I would not be sending my kid on any sort of one-on-one -on -one trip with any sort of they, them. And yeah. And then another comment says, going on a summer trip with them will put them in a much more trans positive environment uh, than what they could be in right now. And also help them understand the potential underlying crisis of their identity. Yeah. That's like the opposite of advice. Why do we need to do anything? Yeah. Like well, uh, uh, kids confused. It's like, well, wait until you hit puberty. How about that? Um, and then, yeah, somebody goes, yeah, good ideas. Discord is a great resource for trans questioning safe spaces and discussions. Definitely agreed on not telling the parents. Let the Internet radicalize your sons and daughters. And as uh, we've seen, there's been a 4000 percent increase in trans kids, kids that identify as transgender yeah. in the last few years. No. Why did that happen? Yeah, no, that was that was because of society that they didn't exist. Yeah, no and one's so, grooming so, the kids. So now they're just popping up. Don't worry, no one's grooming the kids. The <laughs> internet's your safe place, and uh, all good things come from there. Yeah. Moving on, um, how to give birth through a penis. Yeah, so last one. This is kind of the, mupp the real muppetry of the week. University midwife students taught to care for men giving birth, quote, through their penis. Which I don't know what if it's female to male, but if it's giving birth through the penis, it's an absolute blowout situation. I would assume. I think that's a kidney stone, not a baby. Yeah. Um, but so whatever surgery you did to give the lady the penis, it's it's going to be blown out. And they're not even talking about that. Hmm. They're talking about men who still have male genitalia. They're talking about real men. You need to be familiar with this is like straight from the procedural book. It says you need to be familiar with uh, the catheterization procedure for both female and male anatomy. Uh, following the pre procedure is the same prior to catheterization for any person. So this isn't for a woman who becomes a man but still has all the woman parts and is pregnant. I think this is just a purely. I think what we're seeing here is them including something in a textbook to match someone's mental illness that doesn't have any biological sense. It's not like a call him a man while he still has it, while they still have a vagina, the pregnant man Netflix show. This is just make the m dudes with penises feel good while we're teaching you in an academic sense. So setting. they're teaching how to give birth or how to go through that process to help a, a trans person give birth, even though it's not ever possible. For that trans person to give birth, are talking about male parts? Yeah. Is that correct? Exactly. Here's one line that says, place sterile towel across the person's thighs, ensuring the scrotal area is covered. Another note says, in this uh, little four by four grid, says, note, male persons should be warned of discomfort as the deflated balloon passes through the prostate gland. Yeah. So if there's a prostate gland, it's 100% a man. And there's, it's a big shit? And it's taking? like a, you're pulling it out of the guy's butt and the baby comes out of the butt. So that's where I'm saying I think this is just like to make mentally ill people feel included in the textbook. There's, but there's no situation where you could ever have like a man with yeah. a prostate no. pushing out a baby. But of they run not. you through the, the, the protocol and how to do it, even though it can never be done, just to say, hey, we covered all of our bases. We're inclusive. Pretty much. Okay. Hey, if that's what it is, then imagine, imagine, I didn't even study things in college regular. Imagine studying for your test and it's like how to give birth if you're a man with a penis and you have to study that. And you're like, <laughs> all right, remove the scrotal area, clean the metis and make the person comfortable. Okay. What's uh, a metis? I don't even know. I got to look that up. But uh, yeah, so I think this is educational materials just to make someone feel good and included which is absolutely crazy and that's why it's in cringe of the week yeah that was a very solid cringe of the week especially the met gala costume review uh moving on guys this episode as always is brought to you by shopbuckets.com best merch in the game use code jerry for 15 percent off we have trader joe's the clintons kid thrasher crenshaw sucks plus much more also fleckistoys.com 
Christopher, the badass Dan Crenshaw action figure, and the Hillary Clinton receptacle van. That store is back open, and we are adding new products next week. So get these two while you still can before the next two drop. It goes a long way and supports the show. If you like the shirt I'm wearing, not a fed, it's not one of mine, and it's not an ad. This is just a friend of the show who made it, mostly peaceful memes, sir. And it's linked in the description if you want to get a not the fed shirt and support another great right-wing content creator. Uh, go ahead and do that. Link is in the description. Let's get into the good stuff. Let's get into the show. I made the joke, uh, not a fed uh, order of 50 shirts sent to Quantico, Virginia. Like, uh-oh. <laughs> uh-oh. The We're, fed boys. You're going to hide. Yeah, you're going to see them at the next MAGA rally outside the Capitol or something. Yeah, not a fed. Yep. That's pretty funny. Uh, so abortion is on its way to being not even illegal. Just Roe v. Wade's about to get overturned. So it goes yep. back to the states. Thank you, Joe Biden. Yeah, shout out to Catholic Joe. Shout out to Catholic Joe. Got rid of it within a year of being in office. Trump couldn't get it done. Catholic Joe did. Obviously, we're kidding. This only existed because of the uh, conservative judges that were appointed by Trump. So we're very grateful for that. All the demon people are big mad. This is, this is I think, the single most angering issue for the demon people. Yeah. And which is kind of telling, right? Like the demon people get angry when you can't kill. Yeah, um, the unborn, the most innocent thing. They get so mad and they shriek and go crazy because they don't have the right to kill their babies and sacrifice them the devil, which is weird because all the leftists are vaccinated. Can they even have kids anyway at this point? Yeah, I don't know. So it, maybe that's just like a cover. Maybe they flipped it just so no one notices that none of the vaccinated people can have kids anymore. Interesting. Yeah, it's a theory. It's a satire show. We can make jokes. <laughs> I had a dream. <laughs> I had a dream about um, that. Um, but so I think the way they framed this issue, it's like that's the single biggest threat to your autonomy. And these college girls, like this is when they start really screeching. Yeah. And they go crazy. Um, so it's a real bad marketing thing. And then all these white women, these white college women just scream for it and get crazy, yell in people's faces. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I think one of the easier things to do is like all agree that like after five months or, you know, three months or whatever, like these people are are talking about like nine month abortions. Mm -hmm. And they're like any time we saw with the Sav Hernandez video um, seven days after the baby is born in California. Yeah. People are like, yeah, uh, throw it out like or do whatever. Um, and it's just like. If we can at least agree on that, like people have premature babies at like five months or four and a half months. Mm -hmm. And then the doctors are like, we need to save this baby, get it in the incubator, all that. It's like babies live after that point, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and that's like, that's one of the things if a person, if you're arguing with someone or talking to someone and they can't even agree with that, then it's, it's lost. You know, it's not yeah. really worth any time. It's two, it's, it's two different worlds we're living in. Uh, everyone gets mad. The, the, pro-abortion people are the most intense demon people that there that exists and it's always like what if a woman gets raped what if it's an incest situation and you want her to carry that baby so we have some of the stats 0.001% of pregnancies resulted from incestuous relationships 0.085% the woman was raped in the situation um 6.26 percent the woman aborted for social or economic reasons and then 92.3 percent uh no reason it was an elective situation so you didn't have enough money it was you know or you know it wasn't convenient yeah just didn't want the kid so that's everybody so it's basically uh, another form of birth control at this point it used to be rare and safe and whatever and that was their whole motto you know let people do it and quiet there was some shame associated with it but for some reason, that all went away, and now it's just like a final form of birth control, and people like it, embrace it, and celebrate their abortions, which is super gross. Uh, Rand Paul has a book, and this kind of went viral uh, over the last few mm -hmm. days. It's It's like a paragraph. I'm going to read it. Um, it's from Rand Paul's book. You want me to read it? I'll read it. On the one occasion in the 1960s when abortion was still illegal, I witnessed while visiting a surgical suite. Is that what it's called? Surgical suite? Yeah. yeah. Surgical suite as an, o as an OBGYN resident, the abortion of a fetus that weighed approximately two pounds. It was placed in a bucket, crying and struggling to breathe, and the medical personnel pretended not to notice. Soon the crying stopped. This harrowing event forced me to think more seriously about the important issue. The same day in the OB suite, an early delivery occurred and the infant was born slightly larger than the one that was aborted. 
But in the room, everybody did everything possible to save the child's life. My conclusion that day was that they were overstepping the bounds of morality by picking and choosing who should live and who should die. These were human lives. There were no consistent moral basis of the value of life under these circumstances. Which is pretty intense. That's super dark. And that's like what I'm kind of talking about. It's like if you if a, a baby is viable in one way, but in a, just a, a, a allowable abortion in another, that's pretty dark. Yeah. And everyone gets big mad. Everyone's so upset. They think they're taking all their rights away. It's just like, don't get pregnant. If, yeah. you, if it's so important to you, don't get pregnant. And then it's like, now they're talking about, well, now a person who wants to get an abortion has to travel across state lines in some situations. Good. It should be as hard as possible. Yeah. And it's like, you talked about Kyle Rittenhouse traveling across state lines and he killed someone who was guilty and trying to kill him and a criminal. But now crossing state lines to kill the most innocent and unborn baby is, I guess, frowned upon now. Yeah. So a lot of the things don't add up. Obviously, my body, my choice. That's what everyone's saying now after trying to make everyone get vaccinated for two years. We must punish them for the unvaccinated. Yeah. yeah. So nothing in these uh, nothing in this debate adds up. Uh, I think the most important thing uh, when someone's pro-choice, like if you want to be pro-choice, that's fine in my mind. But as long as you know what you're signing up for. I think a lot of times people are pro-choice and they're like, oh, you know, I'm a guy. It's not my not my place to pick. Oh, I'm a guy. It's a woman's body, her choice. It's her thing to choose. I don't want to get involved. And it's like a weak, that's like a weak stance. I think you have to kind of know what you're saying you're okay with. So if you're pro-choice and that's your stance, you should watch a video of what an abortion looks like, especially third and second trimester when it's literally just murdering a kid that could survive out of the womb. Full uh, fingernails, full hair, all that just stuff. Just a little mini baby. Yeah. And then it gets chopped up and stabbed in the heart and its neck cut and the head squished. So if you're fine with that, then cool. You're pro-choice. You're sick. Yeah. But it, you're pro-choice. And if you're not going to look into it, you're kind of like, as a man especially, you're escaping and you're just retreating into just the gray area and the general, the generalities. Oh, you know, it's not my, I'm a guy. Oh, it's a woman's right to choose. And you're actually not taking a stand. It's a very weak approach. You have to know what you're standing for. And if you're pro-choice, you're pro-choice. And you're in line with this six, six stuff that these people are doing. Should we see what David Hogg said about it? Of course. Well, David Hogg was tweeting about it, but then he deleted his tweets. Yeah. So David Hogg is that weak man that we're talking about. And then, w- and then listen to what he says after he deleted all these like uh, abortion tweets. I just took down all the tweets I posted. Thank you to my friends who called me in. As a cis man, it is not my place to speak right now, and I let my anger get the best of me. I am sorry. Out of respect for said friends and all people impacted by this decision, I will be offline for a bit to take to not take up any more space on your timeline. Good night. Good boy. Good boy, David. You listen. The girls tell you what to do, David. Good job. It's like, what, you throw away your opinions because what? what? It's not your place to talk, but the same people didn't tell you what a woman is and a man can get pregnant and they blow out their penis yeah. and they give birth through their penis. So it's like a very hard clown world to keep up with. Everyone wants to debate it. Oh, what about the the babies that are born into foster care? Are they better off? Yeah, because they're alive. It's no debate. Don't kill baby. That's it. Don't uh, kill baby. Um, and in in terms of the like, uh, proud of your abortion, the yelling, screeching demon people. The account is called Shout Your Abortion. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, they're pretty proud of it. But I took a screenshot because it's the dumbest statement I've ever seen. It says, "We have zero faith in the Supreme Court to protect our fifty-year-old constitutional right to abortion." Fifty-year-old constitution. Constitutional right. Let me just. When was the Constitution written again? Math, real quick, anything? see if that adds up. Yeah, so, yeah. Just so stupid, small-minded thinking. Um, and then Roe v. Wade. It's just like you don't care about the process. If abortion was so popular, wouldn't we have a a, a legislation for it? Wouldn't there be some law passed at some point? Fifty years since Roe v. Wade, and now, and you couldn't pass a law on it. Mm-hmm. So it must not be that popular. Or yeah, something. and they had like the fake stat that seventy percent of people are for it or whatever. That's a fake stat. If it was the case, then let's see it. Let's see the numbers. Yeah. Um, check out this lady who is yelling about how she's not going to be a church quiet. mouse. Maybe a quiet mouse about them taking our rights away. What the fuck? I skipped that. Don't lecture me. 
some on the same side as you, you don't fucking love Shemaine. Nice. Nice. You, you, you fucking didn't, you didn't church care. mouth you about Cain taking way. our fucking rights. I'm not going to be a fucking church mouth about it. So don't fucking let Shemaine. Why don't you yell over there instead of yelling over here? So yeah, because well, she's not treating me. Get angry. Oh, it's a little insight. Are you guys angry? 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 Conceive, you lost baby killer exactly get angry get mad and it's like you're a stupid lady you're you're wrong you're getting mad that we're not allowed to kill the babies anymore and you're trying to get people on your side to be into killing the babies you're wrong you're you're very incorrect about this cope and see yeah cope and see young lady <laughs> um or ma'am uh, and so people, people just have this broad thing where they just go, our rights are this. And it's like, wh where, who, who, who gave you these rights? You know, mm. we can have multiple conversations about this, like God given rights, your rights in the country, whatever. It's like our rights. What, what are you talking about? Yeah. This is like from 1955 that we, you know, started this. So. Yeah. And Elizabeth Warren was getting uh, big mad about this too. She has this thing where she does like this fake crying voice where she's like, I can't believe what I'm hearing. And it has like this like fake tone like Cory Booker does where it sounds like you're on the verge of tears. And it's just like the least authentic tone that you can present any argument with. Yep. And going for, for decades now. And we are going to fight for, for decades now. And we are going to fight. We are going to fight back. Fight back. Isn't that what got Rudy Giuliani in trouble for January 6th? Yeah, the I, words fight. And, I thought you're not allowed to say we're going to fight back. I yeah. thought that was a, a insurrection term. Yeah. I think people are doing insurrections now. Well, it's like, shouldn't you be uh, going with a different angle instead of angry and mean? You know, why don't you be eloquent and say something important? You're an old lady. You're a 65-year-old plus lady. It's not the time to start screaming and yelling. You don't sound... Yeah. Important. You, or good. That's not who leads us into battle. Yeah, exactly. Elizabeth Warren. Uh, it's very simple. Don't have sex or don't have sex with people you wouldn't start a family with. Pretty much it right there. That solves a lot of problems. And then if you do get pregnant and you're fighting now for the right to kill your baby, that's like a that, that's not the that's not society's problem. You've already there are many things you could have done in between those two things to prevent it. So if it's harder to get an abortion, that's what happens when when you start winning on if you're on the right side. Yep. Uh, and then the last thing for the abortion section, uh, Kamala Harris, the vice president of the United States. Yep. The next one up to president, if anything were to happen, uh, tweeted the rights of all Americans are at risk in this draft opinion. If the right to privacy is weakened, every person could face a future in which the government can potentially interfere in the personal decisions you make about your life. A little late for that. Yeah, that sounds familiar. A little late in caring about government overreach affecting your life. Didn't we just, you know, so it's hard to keep up with these people, but because the news is so cyclical and, and everyone has a fish brain, it's like no one notices the hypocrisy, the blatant hypocrisy. Like, oh, a week ago or a month ago, you were calling for everyone to get vaccinated or else you lose your job and you can't send your kids to school and you can't this and that. And now we all forgot that it's clean slate. And the useful idiots are just chirping about this. Neuralized you. <laughs> Forget about the last two full years. Yeah. You know what? Those those two years where everybody moved, everybody moved from uh, California to Florida and stuff just to get away from tyrants. Mm. Yeah. No. So moving on into our mm -hmm. New Orleans street video section, we hit the streets of New Orleans trying to find people that actually like Joe Biden. Uh, it was actually hard to do. This is how it went. Hey guys, it's Fleckus. This week on Fleckus Talks, we are back on the streets. We're on Bourbon Street in New Orleans. We're going to be talking to some people here, and we're going to see if they agree that after a year of Joe Biden, Trump wasn't as bad as everyone said. Let's see if they agree. Fleckus Talks. I'm trying to find people in Bourbon Street who like Joe Biden. Do you like Joe Biden? No. No one does. We can't find anybody. People think that I like Joe Biden because I'm asking. I'm just sincerely trying to find people that do, that no one, no one does. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you like Joe Biden? I'm trying to find people that like Joe Biden. She said no. She said no. That counts. We're shooting a video. We're trying to find people that like Joe Biden. 
That's gonna be hard. I know, no one likes it. The guy's like asleep. Nobody gives a fuck. We give a fuck about being able to drive our car for a little bit farther than a half a mile for $77. Joe Biden? He gets it, he gets it. I'm trying to find people that like Joe Biden. Do you happen to like Joe Biden? I can't find anyone on Bourbon Street so far. Need me, yeah. Same page. Even the furries don't like Joe Biden. Hey folks, how are you? Good, that's what I was wondering. I didn't even want to do an interview. I'm just asking how people are now. Has your life gotten better or worse since Joe Biden's been in office? <laughs> what do you think? I know the answer. Yes, sir, do you happen to like Joe Biden? I'm trying to find people that like Joe Biden. Do you like Joe Biden? Oh, everyone's saying definite no. I, I'm just wondering, has your life gotten better or worse under Joe Biden? I mean, my life been going good without you. Was it doing with... better when Trump was in office? Yeah, I fuck with Trump. Trump the fucking goat, man. That's what I'm saying. Joe Biden's asleep up there. Yeah, he's sleeping right now. I don't know what Joe doing. I'm trying to find people that like Joe Biden on Bourbon Street, but I haven't found one person yet. So it's a no, it's a no. no I'm Joe I'm Biden, Democrat. yes or no? I'm Democrat, but Joe Biden raised the fucking gas prices. So he's a dumbass. He raised the gas prices, he's asleep. It's not even that. The pipeline shut down. That, that would open millions of jobs. Yeah. That would open that. Also, we wouldn't have to re rely on Germany and all that Russian yeah. shit. Yeah, it's yeah, just that's right. Energy Joe. independent. Sleepy that's just fact. Sleepy Joe, Joe. the guy's Joe. asleep. It looks great. He actually did you a favor. He looks skinnier. He looks more handsome. I see people in the background laughing. Everybody who voted for Biden, if anybody out there exists, you owe me gas money. The only reason why I did not like Trump because of the immigration. Before it's the economy, he had his shit right, man. He had his shit right. It's been a year of Joe Biden in office. Has your life gotten better? You hate Joe Biden? Me too, man. Me too. All right, people get it. Scale one to ten, how would you rate Joe Biden's first year in office? Uh, four. Four out of ten? Andrew. Yes. End it right now. Yeah. Not allowed to say that. Has your life improved since he's been in office? No. I hate Joe Biden. Yeah, it's safe to say Trump wasn't that bad, right? No, I love Trump. We love Trump too. So it's been a year since Joe Biden's been in office. Um, has your life improved at all because of Joe Biden? No, not at all. Has it gotten worse because of Joe Biden? Costs have gone up, yes. It has. Uh, is it fair to say that after a year of seeing Joe Biden in office that Trump wasn't as bad as people said? Absolutely. All right, very cool. I'm getting salt stains on my shirt. I asked you a 10 second question for a survey. It's about Joe Biden's first year in office. Has your life gotten better? Yeah. Uh, yeah? yeah? How so? Because Trump's not in office. But like, what about like your real life besides Trump? Like what's gotten better from Joe Biden? Uh, I guess the stimulus. The economy's kind of bad. Gas prices are bad, stuff like that. Ukraine, Russia. Yeah, that's true. All right, see ya. Also, first woman of color in office. I don't count that though. Got the blown out neon sixes on today. Can I ask you a quick question? It's like I wasn't even there. Excuse me, sir. I'm shooting a video. I'm trying to find people that like Joe Biden. Can I add you to that list or no? No, bro. I haven't found one guy yet. I haven't found anybody. No one likes him. Biden's been in office for a year. Has your life gotten better because of Joe Biden? Oh, um. <laughs> be honest, be honest. Uh, it's been a year of Joe Biden in office. Has your life gotten better since Joe Biden's been president? Way worse. Way worse? Way worse. Better. Way worse. Hate Is it safe to say Trump better. wasn't that bad after seeing a year of Joe Biden? Correct. Trump was horrible. Trump was horrible. All right, work that out, you two. This guy's setting up a dick shop here. Might want to move a little bit. It's an audio nightmare with all these drums. Everywhere you go, there's a, there's a drum set. People doing drums on the, on the back of buckets. It's an audio nightmare here. Do either of you guys happen to like Joe Biden? I'm taking a survey. Definitely a no and a, and a hell no. Two no's. We're going to find someone who likes Joe Biden. I'm just asking people if they like Joe Biden or not. I'm trying to find someone who likes I Joe Biden. I don't speak English very well. Oh, that's all right. The answer you're looking for is I don't like him. Excuse me, sir. Do you, do you like Joe Biden? Do you like Joe Biden? I'm trying to find people that like Joe Biden. I can't find anybody. Do you like Joe Biden? I'm looking for people that like Joe Biden. I'm doing a survey on the street trying to find people that like Joe Biden and I haven't found anyone. Do you guys like Joe Biden? Oh, uh, but we are Dutch. Yeah, yeah. We Europeans like, him. We like, like him Joe more Biden. Than, more than Trump. More than Trump. Okay. Do you you don't like Joe Biden. I'm think. not a huge fan, but at least there's people who like him. That's good. People from Europe like Joe Biden. Yeah, he's big. Yeah. I think that people in America don't like him because people in other countries like him more. Does that make sense? 
No, that, 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 that doesn't, make so. doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. You like? Do you like Joe Biden? I'm trying to find one person on Bourbon Street who likes Joe Biden. I didn't understand your question again. Yeah, there's just do you like Joe Biden? Do either of you guys try and find one person who likes Joe Biden or not? Sorry, say that again. Joe Biden, the president? Uh-huh. Okay, we found, all right. Finally, everyone I ask, they go like this. Try and find people that like Joe Biden, yes or no, and everyone's saying no. I'm trying to find someone who likes him. Well, I mean, you can have a spirited debate, but like... What do, you, what, do you like Joe Biden? Why Why is that a, a figure that is like it's a metric you have to be liked? Well, I'm, I'm saying like, do you think he's doing a good job? Doing a good job. Is it's your life better now that he's been in office for a year, or worse than it was a year ago? My my life personally has gotten better. So you paying cheap gas or what? You know that like gas is not set by like the president though, right? Well, you know that's like that's like factually incorrect. No yeah, like not even a little bit. So why is the gas price so high right now? Are you not seeing like what's happening in the world economy? Like, there's I an am. active war happening by a country controlling like a quarter of. But a, ma- a majority of the like, gas. What are you talking about? The gas prices went up before the war in Ukraine and Russia happened. You know how long it's been building up? For a year. Yeah. So as have prices been increasing over the past year? That's a, that's a yes. Yes. Right. And Joe so Biden's been in office for a year, and we can open up our pipelines and become energy independent and have our prices go down how like they were with Trump. How long it'll take for those investments to actually come to fruition? It'll take, it'll take, it'll take, it'll take, literally, literally, the pipeline that goes from Russia into You kind of do flip a switch. The pipeline, you can literally flip a switch. No, you, but you can't just fucking build it. There's a pipeline that's been going from Russia into Germany. It's been taking a couple years to construct. You're acting as if you can just turn on reserves. Why, why does, why does Russia's energy and pipelines affect us? How does what, how does what happens no, in the EU affect the world economy? Are you no, saying, like, you, like, like literally, like, Russia, one know, country, produces 25% of all know, energy five, into hey, Europe? Retard, into retard, Europe, retard, yeah. Retard, retard, retard. Effects on uh, Europe. Obviously, you're going to be On Europe. Oh, you dropped your drink. What do you think, buddy? Wow. Is that uh, some sort of... That's a needle right there. No needles. No commie fucks. Good, yeah. No, <laughs> no, no more commie fucks. Well, Sarah, can I ask a quick question for a survey? No. Okay. So, yeah. No one likes Joe Biden. Even in New Orleans. Even in New Orleans, we literally couldn't find... I don't know people that liked him were people from Europe. Yeah. The Europeans liked him. They didn't want to upset anybody. They are just like, yes, we like. He's okay. Yeah, he's better than the other guy. He respects women. So uh, it was it was tough to find people that actually liked Joe Biden. And the whole thing, people from Europe liking him more, that's kind of it. It's like the Europeans like Joe Biden. The Americans don't. And that's kind of it. It's like a globalist versus a nationalist yeah, situation. Yeah, it works out for Europe. Yeah, it's true. It's I understand why the Europeans like Joe Biden. Uh, moving on, Urban Decay section. We have a great Urban Decay today. Uh, and this one, uh, it's called, my thing is called Pitbull Attacks Everyone. Yeah. So the situation where a woman's getting mugged and then a girl with a pitbull goes over with her dog to try to help. Um, then, then the dog attacks the person getting mugged and then the owner. And the mugger gets away. <laughs> it's literally a trifecta here. Mm. And you brought the dog over as like a weapon, you know, oh, this sweet boy that wears a tutu and the sweetest dog ever. You knew what he had in him. You just couldn't direct it. You Mm -hmm. just couldn't direct it properly. And he got smoked. Everyone got smoked but the dog. That's perfect. The muggers, mugger types love pit bulls. Yeah. They don't, they're uncontrollable. Nothing happens. And the mugger got away with all the stuff. And now the person who got mugged got mugged and also attacked by a dog. (laughs) Got mugged and like their thigh ripped. So (laughs) nice. Good day. Um, next one, this um, woman is walking on the sidewalk and taking up more space to fight back against white privilege. So I'm currently in Paris and I've got some errands I gotta do today. So I'm gonna go out and get myself some micro reparations by not moving out of any white person's way since they love to take up the road. Micro reparations. This is how good I'm gonna look while doing it. Yeah, get into it, get into it. Just a little, a little, a little something. All right, let's go. Mm-hmm. Let's see, let's see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's why single file, ho. Shut her mouth, bitch. Zuta What a lady. You know what I would do in that situation? I would get out of the woman's way because she's a lady. And then I would see how she handled it and just think, wow, what a sad person has no control of their life and no power. And the only way they can get power and control is to be rude and in public and take up too much space in the sidewalk. Yeah, I'd feel pitiful for this person because they're a race obsessed weirdo who what micro reparations. 
Cool. We're even. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so I'm almost prepared preparations again. I'll be like, there's a lady on the sidewalk. Actually, we already, she covered already took that. it. Yeah. She already took it all. That was me and her. What a joke. I mean, what a race obsessed, weird person. You know, you're going out in Paris on a beautiful day. And the only thing you can think about is making TikTok content for weird racists online mm-hmm. like yourself. Next clip is all these kids with guns in their school. The future doctors of America is what I labeled it. So all these kids have, what, a basketball game or something? Yeah. We not even going to play like that for no grades. Y'all see them killers in here? Hey, stop playing. And they all have tons of guns. <laughs> Everyone's got guns. <laughs> these kids are like 15. Yeah, 15 in high school. You know, schoolwork, probably not focused on. How do you spell encyclopedia? Uh, no one knows, but they all have their weapons and guns. It's and it's scary. The the kids with the guns are the scariest. Yeah, we were in New Orleans mm-hmm. and we saw some kids like get out of a car and they were wearing a mask and gloves and stuff at like a convenience store. And in the back, they were like definitely teenagers. In the back, they had a bunch of guns in the car. Yeah, and it was just like those are the reckless ones. Those are the ones that don't know what they're doing. They'll they'll just shoot you for nothing. Those are the ones where you read about in Chicago, and it's like a three year old got hit with a bullet. Mm-hmm. That's where it came from. It's yeah. those types, the reckless, like they think it's Call of Duty mixed with Grand Theft Auto, and trying to impress their brother. Yeah, exactly. And then they go to juvie for three years, where they get a crash course on how to be better at crime, and then they go out at eighteen and you know probably do it again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, last clip of Urban Decay. Guy tries to rob concealed carry class. This is my favorite. This should be an uplifting gold. Yeah, this should be. <laughs> this actually is. We're taking a break in the classroom when Mr. Payton entered the room and began rifling through a bag which contained a handgun that belonged to one of the students. The owner of the bag was able to prevent the gun from being stolen and Mr. Payton was escorted out of the classroom at that time. An employee spoke to Mr. Payton for several minutes trying to figure out what he was doing in the gun range. A short time later, another employee called police to report the attempted grand larceny. Three employees escorted Mr. Payton outside of the business and waited for officers to arrive. Officer Wynn and his partner instructed Mr. Payton to stand in front of their patrol vehicle. Mr. Payton ignored those instructions and started to walk away while hiding his right hand in his jacket pocket. Officers attempted to grab Mr. Payton, but he pulled away and still refused to listen to the officers. Officers attempted to grab Mr. Payton by his arms once again to gain control of him. This time, Mr. Payton pulled away and produced a screwdriver from his pocket and violently attacked the officers. Mr. Payton made several overhand strikes with the screwdriver towards one of the officers look head at and this neck freeze area. frame mm, Mr. five was guys drawn guns yeah. all painted, pointed at this guy As and he's done do not rob a concealed officer carry class and three this is like 101 this is like where you don't go striking and Mr. everyone Payton. shoots him right everyone yeah. shot him he got shot by five officers guys here immediately on. summoned medical personnel but mr payton succumbed to his injuries at the so scene. everyone shot him it was the right thing to do that's like a in in the field lesson from concealed carry class. Yeah. After that, it goes okay. Uh, and you have like, all right, you did a really good job. You he was actually facing away when you shot him, so you're gonna have to talk to the cop. Yeah, uh, you did great. You did great. Yeah, absolutely nuts. Uh, that's what happens. That's and that's why you know for everyone who has guns, that's why we need guns too. Absolutely. It's a very simple argument. I know David Hogg obviously thinks that people with guns are insecure and. Men are trying to be men because they have guns. Well, what happens when a cop gets stabbed with a screwdriver and you have a, wouldn't you want to have a gun in that situation? Yeah. Cop gets stabbed by the screwdriver and you're like, okay, nine minutes until the next cop gets here. Yeah. And you have to live in like this fake utopia where, oh, there's no crime though. You have to live in a world where, oh, oh, there's no bad guys with guns. It's just insecure men. So obviously that's not the case. And that's why it makes it into urban decay. There you go. Moving on. Uplifting gold. Let's not get too down. Let's not forget what life is all about. Let's look at some positive clips that keep us grounded and normal. First one, girl gets pulled over uh, by cop. <laughs> okay. See, this is uplifting. <laughs> uplifting gold. I don't know. This is like a this. formative thing for kids. Getting pulled over and you start crying. Daddy. 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 Stop. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, that's scary. You ever get pulled over in high school? <laughs> yeah. A few uh, times? Yeah. Yeah. A couple times. I, I never, I don't think I ever got a ticket. Like I was, I got tickets when I was like 20 or something. Mm. I had but it's t- scary. I mean, nobody oh, likes getting pulled over and you're like, what, like, uh, you know, what do we have? Did we drink or something? Mm-hmm. You know, I had a situation in high school where I almost got pulled over. Um, I was, I went to high school in Long Island. I can say this story because the store is now closed. Okay. Statue of limitations. Statue of limitations. It was like ten, over 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to go to the alcohol liquor store on the corner by my high school. Mm-hmm. And the guy there would sell his beer. And I was one time went in wearing my school uniform, high school uniform. And the guy sold me beer and I was a football player in high school and I was like known in the area. And the guy goes, oh, you're the guy from the paper. You're the football player from the newspaper. <laughs> and I was just like, yeah, yeah, that's me. And he's like, oh, man, that's awesome. Like, keep up the good work or whatever. So like, he didn't. I don't think he knew the rules or didn't think like 21 and over was like a it was a firm rule. He was kind of just like, eh, you know. Yeah. So he sold me the beer and I went to my car and as I'm walking in and put it in my car in my school uniform, a cop pulled into the parking lot and I remember getting in the car and I'm seeing the cop pull into the spot like two spots over next to me and I'm like, oh my God, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. And I put it in reverse and started driving away and the cop put it in reverse, started driving away, followed me for probably a quarter of a mile. Then I got in the highway and he went straight. Wow. But in my head, I was like, I'm done. I'm, oh, it's over. I'm taking the beer and trying to like, hide it in the back seat, yeah. like whatever I could. Super scary. Biggest uh, in high school, too. That's like the biggest. Exactly. Fear. It's, it's if you get in trouble, I don't go to college for football. And my yeah. mom's going to kill me. I have an Italian mom who's going to freak out. Exactly. Uh, it was so scary. But it was a funny, it was a funny formative memory. The and, school uniform buying beer, you're insane for that. Yeah. Because <laughs> at a certain point, we used to like change and go on the weekends to the spot or whatever. And there was one time where like I didn't want to go all the way home and back, and I was wearing the pants and the shirt, and the guy was like, "You're the guy from the paper." And I thought like, "All right, now he knows I'm in high school. It's over." And he's like, "Oh man, good job. Keep it up." Yeah, uh, uh, twenty ninety nine. <laughs> like <laughs> just completely over it. did not enforce the rules or even understand. Um, it was pretty funny. That's great. Next, uh, old lady neighbor. So this lady came over to the ring cam. We are having taco night, so if you like to eat, you just come over, and you're welcome to get it. You this, hear me? This should be a cringe. <laughs> get this lady out of here. Come on my steps and what, invite me to your dinner? Night. Taco and night, dude. I'm kidding. That yeah, sounds obviously. lovely. I would go to that 100%, and that's nice. Nice to see old ladies being nice to people, and it's nice to see people care about their neighbors. Yeah. She understands the how the ring camera works. Mm-hmm. She's still going, making tacos. Good for her. Good for her. We like her. Um, moving on. Friends with Fox. My favorite neighbor Tony is friendly with the local folks, and it makes my heart explode. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Tony. That's nice. Guy friends with Fox. You friends with any Fox? No. No Fox? <laughs> Can't say I have a Fox friend. But yeah, Foxes are little dogs, man. It's the same thing. Yeah. They're a little yappy, but they that's get a, nice. Yeah, they get a little yappy, but they're they're fun. You don't have to take care of them. They're on their own. Friends with Fox. Good. Fox and friends. That's uplifting. Have we not been uplifting this week? We have. You're you're so far you're pretty good. Uh, I'm getting, getting better. Some high school girl's worst memory. Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> the taco lady that you had to be <laughs> negative about. But yeah, you're you're close. We're I mean, getting close. You're, you're getting better. You're you're I'm, trending in the right direction. I'm right? getting better. Next one, uh, gay a dog, local shelter dog rather, is looking for a soft landing after being dumped by his owners because they say he's gay. Thought you heard it all, right? Uh, A Stanley County Animal Shelter Facebook post says the dog's owner surrendered him to the shelter after he humped another male dog, which dogs do. Fezco, the shelter says, it's about four to five years old, weighs about 50 pounds. They say he likes other people. He likes other animals. He's a good boy. The shelter is asking for local rescues to step up and take Fezco into foster before he is adopted. So why is that an uplifting goal? Yeah, that's my question to you. I don't know. Why is it in there? Why Why would it be uplifting to get rid of a gay dog? 
unless you're an anti-gay dog. I don't know. You're homoph- You're canine homophobic. Why? Did, why is it? You in put there? you sent this to me. No, I said it first. You sent it to me. So that's where Richard Rat Boy. Uh, I'm not going to ask you to. I won't get you in trouble. It's actually funny because they dogs male dogs hump other dogs for dominance. Mm-hmm. So it's like your dog's actually an alpha. And you just gave it up. He's not gay. He's an alpha. And you're like, just, all right, no, none of that. We've noticed that with Jerry at the dog park. He keeps it 100 and he's a good guy. Uh, But then there are times when there's like a weak dog, Mm -hmm. a little male dog running around. And he'll kind of like get into this new state I've never seen where he's just like, (laughs) and then like tries to hump and like lobster claws in, um, which might lead to his neutering. Yeah. We obviously were not going to neuter Jerry. That was the plan. He's still not neutered. He's over a year old. He's nice and big. Um, but we might chop his nuts off. Why? What's, let's hear the thought process. He's just getting, uh, he gets like on a one track mind when, and that he can't get out of. Like he be, he's a beast. Testosterone fueled just craze. He's just a beast where it's like he'll get kind of, I don't want to say aroused, but he'll get kind of like in like this certain bricked up. Bricked up is the the phrase we used. He'll get like bricked up and then like he'll just he can't listen. He has to go. He'll pull as hard as he can on the leash. He'll do whatever he can to get to whatever's the other dog or the the sound he hears, whatever it is. And it's getting hard to fix. And I feel like if I chop his nuts off, he'll just be this chill house dog. Yeah, that drive is immediately gone. So Yeah. And we got the stuff that we wanted out of it. We want we got wanted him to have size and muscles, which he does. Uh, so we're thinking about chopping his nuts off, even though earlier in the, in the season of the show, we said that we would never would, um, and we weren't gonna. So this could be a gyro meat scenario, full 180. This could be a full public apology press conference. Yeah. Remember in gyro meat when we changed our mind and we were like, guys, why, why did no one stop us from eating pounds of gyro meat like this? It's disgusting. It's going to be the same thing. Guys, he's an unneutered Rottweiler beast. Like, of course we're going to chop his nuts off. Duh. Um, we left him in the uh, in where we were staying in New Orleans. We left him in the cage once, and we came back. His entire mat was chewed up. Like the plastic under thing was like out, and then his cage was like shuffled over like five feet. And it was just like, all right, buddy, you were close to getting out. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know. We uh, might chop his nuts off. We might not. Let us know in the comments. Is he gonna chill out? Well, it's like, are we gonna? Is he gonna? Are we gonna breed him? I, I mean, I would love if there was a high quality Rottweiler female with great markings and not a scrunched in face with inset eyes. Let me know. <laughs> yeah. All right. Last chance. Audience, if you guys know anybody, any Rottweiler ladies who are looking to host a litter. Yep. Let us start. know in the comments. We will do that and then we will chop his nuts off. Yep. So that's a good plan. That's a good compromise. Fair. Last clip, Uplifting Gold. The Chinese people are fighting back. This is in Shanghai. Love to see it. That's what we need. I love seeing people in those white Chinese oppressor outfits running off. That's yeah. my favorite shit. So. That's my favorite shit, too. And so. that's how mad liberal college girls are going to be about abortion. Mm -hmm. But nothing about lockdowns. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's it. Another week in the books. Another Fluckus Talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, share, subscribe. All the good stuff. Shop Fluckus.com for the best merch in the game. Use code Jerry 15% off. FluckusToys.com for the very cool action figures. Hillary Clinton receptacle van and the badass Dan Crenshaw. Get those while you still can. Bonus land. If you guys like the show and want an extra 20 minutes of bonus land, it starts in about 30 seconds. Patreon.com slash Fleckus or YouTube join. The links are in the description. And last but not least, join the Fleckus Clips channel. Subscribe. It's linked in the description. It's smaller versions of the podcast and street videos and everything. All Fleckus Clips in a small, palatable format. Check those out. Link is in the description. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you at the next one.
you know, gonna make you feel better are some red pills.